Hi there, I'm Danny Henderson. Welcome back to the greatest channel on YouTube for disclosure, aliens, UFOs, energy off planet, hidden technology, repressed. Danny, sorry, I cannot record. Hi there, I'm Danny Henderson. Welcome back to my beautiful channel, the channel for all things disclosure, alien, UFO, hidden technology, spacecraft, frill energy. How does it work? We have experts here today who have proof who have validated, who have brought incredible information to our planet. I want to say hello to the great, the one and only, the researcher, the writer, the authority, Dan Willis. Hello, sir. How are you today? Always a pleasure, Danny. Um, this is an exciting show. I'm very honored to uh, join you on this. Brilliant. I can't wait for you to share the energy and the information that you're about to share. Elena Danan. Hello there, love. How are you? I'm very well, Danny. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to share this knowledge with uh, you too. That's going to be exciting and great fun. Excellent. Now, um, Elena, you are the emissary for the Galactic Federation of Worlds, which is a physical uh, military um, situation off planet where we are being looked after, looked over, protected. A lot of our nuclear arms have been disarmed, a lot of interruption from uh, things that could have gone catastrophically wrong because the wrong people have been in charge and don't know how to behave. So the Galactic Federation of Worlds, which are basically military personnel that look like all of us and you guys out there, physical personnel, not makey-ups, not wishy-washy little wispy ghosts, you know. <laughs> But real people. Um, and Elena is in physical contact uh, in so many ways. There's many, many, many documented evidences that she's brought to us. Now, Elena, one of your most recent gifts to the world is your Galactic Encyclopedia. Can you share it with us for a moment, please? Well, the Galactic uh, Encyclopedia Galactica is um, a colorized version of the the guidebook of alien races from a gift from the stars my first book from 2021 and i extended it to all the civilizations uh, stage three in this galactic sector so it's about the volume one is uh, from andromeda to canis minor it's by alphabetical order uh, with the constellation as they are named and seen from earth uh, this first book has about 150 races and uh, that's going to be the whole series so it's um i call it the star seeds guide to the galaxy it's mostly for people who want to know if they resonate with some particular civilizations who are involved in the envoy programs uh, how they can find out more about these cultures uh, where they live their habitat their customs their their civilizations, what they eat, what they do, what do they think, what do they believe in. So um, that's what it is. That's amazing. Can you show us the book? I see it right there, right beside you. Give us a little look. Um, Excellent. And, and these are physical beings that you've physically drawn using different tools. I didn't meet them physically, a uh, few of these civilizations, but um, these beings are... Um, artwork that I produced after after <clears throat> uh, holographic data data uh, that was shown to me in uh, a database that is on one of the ships of the Galactic Federation of Worlds in this star system. So I have direct access now. Um, I was interfaced with the, the, the codes of access to this particular file i cannot consult everything it's just this particular file uh, the reason why i cannot consult everything i could but uh, it's not my purpose uh, otherwise i would disappear vanish from society and spend the whole rest of my life consulting these archives so that's not my purpose <laughs> although i want to but it's not my mission so uh, i was cleared to uh, interact with this file only which is amazing which is extraordinary so um, i can access the the holographic representations and all the data and the coordinates of their planets so um, it's all in there that's marvelous marvelous so we're doing the work that nasa was intended to do and just kind of continuing on and bringing everything here and dropping it in and wait for nasa i'll oh, wait for nasa please please um anyway 
Amazing. Thank you so much. And again, those that have sin witnessed of uh, ET beings, this is the kind of book that you want to have a look and see is the being I saw in this book. Many people have validated and many therapists actually use that book and the one before a gift from the stars that also has 110 races in it. And they've used your book in therapy sessions with people who've had experiences to see, does he look like this? Or does it look like this? So it's been incredibly um, useful, the work that you've been doing. I mean, just beyond, beyond. I mean, I don't see anybody else at the moment doing quite what you are doing, although there are ours definitely who are stepping up, such as you, Dan Willis. We're going to talk about the frill energy, the energy of the ethers of the universe and the technology that you have created in this broadcast. And we know that there are people trying to patent it. No, no, no. We're not doing that. We're not doing the Edison, JP Morgan, Nikola Tesla. We're not playing that game anymore. <laughs> everyone's got to get it right we are giving everything that's due to us humanity away for free all the secrets they're all out no one's allowed to own you own humanity or own the patterns own the technology it is not allowed it is forbidden actually there you go so we're going to start with elena denan who's going to tell us the physics of spaceships and how to build them <laughs> take it away elena no pressure Save the world. <laughs> so um, I am going to share, Danny, with your invitation to do so. A uh, few slides that I presented in 2022 in Orlando for the first JSIC, uh, also a historical share uh, now on YouTube. So you see um, what you've missed. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> um, these uh these slides so it, it's the slides i'm going to try to share and i'm going to uh, read through my notes to um explain to you a little bit how spaceships work so share screen okay so um there we go so the, the the frill energy, it was it's drawn from the vacuum of, of space that is filled with a medium that we call the ether. Uh, it has physical substance that generates pressure and gravity and penetrates through everything. The vibration of the vacuum generates longitudinal waves or compression waves. It is an unlimited source of energy. When the ether is still, there is no energy to harvest. When a dynamic impulse generates waves, the ether generates frill, and we can harvest this energy. So that is very important. Uh, coming out of our uh, research with Dan Willis uh, and from working with Jen Ann Heredion, who is a Pleiadian, um, it came about that consciousness and th thoughts produce these uh, impulse waves as well. So that will come about with our work with the crystals, I'll, I'll, as Dan will uh, explain it um, later on. Gravity results from the drop of pressure created by the presence of matter. Ships can harvest energy from the gravitational field of the stars as they approach them. When there is gravity, it implies that the object, a star or a planet, creates a vortex that sucks all the particles from the ether and creates a dynamic of longitudinal waves, a high frequency energy that can be harvested. These are the compression waves in the cosmic ocean. The ether that is absorbed by a planet or a star transforms into spherical compression waves that radiates back outwards. The intensity increases as you get nearer to the star or the planet. So how is this stored? Do you see the next slide? Yes. Everyone? Yes. Okay, it's working. Um... It is stored in special uh, special types of crystals placed in a cylinder at the center of the ship. By nature, crystals are able to capture the vibrations of the ether, store it and radiate it back. Crystals are able to convert scalar waves, 
or compression waves into power via, via the piezoelectric effect and supply the ship by transferring this power into plasma. And we can see also there the, the vira, the, the weapon, the plasma weapon that Enki uh, showed me and they, they, they were using, where you compress the center uh, sphere that compresses a crystal and creates a piezoelectric effect that ignites a gas that becomes plasma and you have a plasma projection. So uh, that's um, very interesting. So now we're getting about into serious stuff about the, the, the the ship, how does the, the this uh, plus plasma uh, or this 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 frill is uh, powering the ship? You use they use ionized mercury, ionized mercury generators in a central cylinder supplying a double toroidal anti-gravity system. Regarding the direction in which the toroids spin, this is mercury with negative ions or mercury iodine, which is red. And this was confirmed by Chris Esson, who said, wait a minute, because it turns in that particular direction, it's not usual mercury, it's mercury iodine, and that is red. So that was confirmation by uh, science. So... The anti-gravity torsion field or electrogravitic propulsion uses two toroids fields, one into the other, in which extremely heated plasma or liquefied metal such as ionized mercury or mercury iodine um, rotate at a very high speed in two perpendicular directions. That's important and that creates a powerful electromagnetic field. So the impulse is sent into one of the torsion field, one of the toroids, sorry, excuse me, one of the toroids, and that's going to induce a, a direction. And this is going to create an electromagnetic field that is going to activate, without any physical contact, the second toroid that, that spins perpendicularly. And this, this perpend perpendicular uh, uh, action creates a torsion field. That's what creates a, creates a torsion field. So um, once the ionized mercury or the plasma is driven by the electromagnetic field of the magnets that are around the central core, it creates a second electric field, which is perpendicular, that's what I explained, and that will in turn induce the motion of the mer in the mercury in the second toroid. And it's a self-driven effect. So that's what I just explained. Um, okay. So um, the two fields combine, create a MHD, magneto-hydrodynamic or dynamo and it is self-sustaining system. A vortex of ether is created that cancels gravity and mass. So now the ship has no mass. That means it can, it can go at any speed it wants. It won't be stopped by anything because it had no mass, so no friction, no resistance. The interior of the habitat is maintained in a stable pressure and gravity. There is no sensation of motion because of the cancellation of the mass of the ship. So you don't feel, you know, when you move, you, you don't feel you're moving inside, actually. And the ship is, the, 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 is in its bubble and not subject to friction and pressure. So another... Uh different type of ships. So you have either this double torsion field that is uh, taking the whole circumference of the ship inside, or you have little balls. And here, double toroids in form of uh, spheres. And that's when we think about the Honobu, Honobu uh, Fourth Reich ships who have these uh, anti-gravity spheres that cancel the mass of the ship. That's uh, a different uh, 
also a model where you have the habitat inside of the torsion field conduit that isolates them from the the the, the exterior, the pressure and everything. Uh, twenty one. Ah, uh, so so that that uh, reminds of the flux liner. What is the flux liner? So the flux liner uses capacitors, and that is used as well in the ships of the the scout ships of the Galactic Federation of Worlds. So the cap. So now we have our ship floating in space, but now it needs to move. So here the capacitors are going to play a role. Um, the capacitors receive electric impulses of high intensity. Electromagnetic waves of compression are created and the craft moves. The hull of the ship is divided into segments that receive high voltage electromagnetic impulses that affects the pressure, generating compression waves to calibrate speed and change direction. The craft is able to change direction like a bullet for its mass is cancelled. It's like a cake, if you want, with the, the slice. You can imagine that with segments. Uh, you have uh, on the right uh, perfect illustrations of all, all the segments and uh, uh, electromagnetic impulse are going to be sent in the segment and the ship is going to move in that direction. So the torsion field creates an ionized field when in an atmosphere. Fields of particles turning at high speeds around the craft, exactly like a hurricane, create a vortex that isolates the craft from the stream of ether when it's in space. The electrically, electrically polar, polarized rotating plasma can become luminescent because of the extremely high electric charges and produce ozone. Gravity is cancelled and gravity wind slides, slides around. So the ships in, the ship in space, uh, they do not uh, produce a, gl a glow. It produces this glow when it is in the atmosphere because this glow, but all that you see there, it's photographs, original photographs. All this glow is produced by uh, the particles of the atmosphere that are excited by the, 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 the torsion fields. So the, 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 it, it forms into a plasma around the, the, the ship and it, it glows. Or sometimes it's orange or, or green, depends on the, the, the gases or the level of uh, damp in the atmosphere. So this is, uh, this is how it works. The, 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 the ship is going towards the left and you have Inside is totally void. It's totally no mass, no no pressure, nothing. It's void, nothing, and because of the torsion field, and you have the the wind of ether that goes around, around it. Like that's a, a, a picture from Star Trek. You see the Enterprise little thing. That's exactly what it is. Star Trek is disclosure, uh, mind you. Um. So uh. So that's another. So that's the same thing for the, the the solar system in the on in its course in the galaxy on the ecliptic plane of the galaxy. It, it goes like this. Uh, it is uh, there's a plasma shield around the, the solar system that does the same thing, that isolates the solar system uh, from uh, space particles because space is not empty. You have plenty of particles, and space sometimes can be hot, not that cold. You know, because of all these particles, when they get excited, it, it heats up very fast, very fast. This is the plasma shield of the star system. There I go. Exactly like the, 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 the picture you just saw of the Star Trek uh, Enterprise ship. You have that's a different. So I'm going to pass on that. Uh, so you have then um, hyperdrive or warp speed. What is it? Well, hyperdrive works by creating a double helix gravity wave displacement, projecting the ship ahead in a very short frequency range. 
the ship is pulled ahead rather than propelled because you create a void at the, the front of the ship. And they can adjust velocity with the frequency wave of this double helix. Cre creating this vacuum tunnel through the ether allows to reach higher speed. Uh, I'm gonna pass on on this. Uh, you can so that's um, I mentioned quickly uh, the different ways of traveling through space. Uh, maybe there's a better slide that uh, this one. You can go by linear. Linear is very long. <laughs> It's linear is uh, usually inside of a solar system or in a planetary atmosphere. Uh, quantum uh, travel using stargates. Stargates are quantum teleport teleportation, uh, not devices, but occurrences. You teleport. It's a difference with a wormhole. A wormhole, like for instance, you see hyperspace can be uh, reached through a wormhole also. Uh, the difference with a stargate and a wormhole is a stargate is you get quantum entanglement to another point and you just teleport. And wormhole is a shortcut through hyperspace. And also you have a travel through time that can be very useful when you have long distances. You want to jump out of time to arrive um, earlier in the, your, your destination. That's a bit more complex, but this is something that um, that happens. Um, so the ship navigation, that's, that's very interesting. So I refer often to uh, movies where, disclosure, this movie is uh, Stargate Atlantis. I recommend Stargate SG-1. It's loaded with disclosure, but Stargate Atlantis has a few goodies. Um, on the left, you see a guy on a, on a command seat. He puts his hand on hexagonal pads and his consciousness is going to drive a ship. Well, that was shown to me in a ship. I actually, when I was 14 year, 16 years old, it's in my book, the gift, A Gift from the Stars. I was invited to try a seat in a scout ship by Thorhan and he showed me all these things. And these pads were either octagonal or either hexagonal. Uh, so how does it work? That's the, the drive by, uh, by thought with the chair interface. So the, the, the ships have um, artificial consciousness. The computer program reaches such a level that it starts to compute thinking of its own. But this type of self-awareness is synthetic, not organic like a soul consciousness. Although you have so, soul consciousness, like the one in the moon or uh, Pithlem, with the, the one who David Adair disclosed, you, you have uh, organic consciousness, but that's something different. It's, the Galactic Federation of World is not using organic consciousness. They use AI. So the mind of the pilot is interfaced with the navigation system via consciousness for certain advanced species of ETs or via an implant in his head. Commonly, it uses gamma brainwaves range. D uh, DNA connection is required as well to jumpstart the ship. You cannot have only consciousness or only DNA. You need the both. That works for every ET technology. So you apply the palms of your hands on the, the patches on the sides of the command seat, and it interfaces your DNA with it. And uh, so only a pilot uh, be belonging to the same species who built the craft can perform such a bonding. Uh, we we only need always need DNA and consciousness, as I said. So when you sit in the command chair, you connect to the central drive, and you interface with the ship's artificial consciousness. It feels so. I um I experienced it. It was like whoa. <laughs> Well, uh, when I experienced it, it was like when my mind connect because I have a, uh, the right DNA in my in my in this avatar, a lot of DNA in that's working with different things here. Uh, when my mind interface with the, the the AI of the ship, it was like a, a wave uh, that really rushed at me through my mind. It was like whoo, and it was on a dark background, like space, not space, but like a void background, 
a lot of ex extremely fast um, connections made with um, 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 geometry and, and lines of light and nodes and, and graphics. It was going so fast that I could not really um, compute what I was seeing. It was like a whole bunch of information. And once this settled, I was interfaced with the AI of the ship as long as I had my hands on the pads. And so any, when I th was thinking about a destination, it would drive. So it's very difficult. I wasn't trained to that. So Thoran made it very easy for me. He set up the, the, the route, automatic pilot, the coordinates, and he said, you only have to give the impulse forward. So that's what I did with my mind. Um, I was concentrating forward, forward. And the ship moved forward on the uh, pre uh, um, pre calculated destination. That was such an experience, and it stopped when Thoran said, "Okay, stop." I removed my hands, and that was disconnection, and that was it. it was like wow. So um, it feels like the ship is like kind of a pet, and um, it's like ready to go and eager to receive orders. It's really, but it's synthetic, you know. So um, longitudinal waves or scalar waves are able to interact with consciousness because the brain is an emitter rece receptor of longitudinal waves. So longitudinal waves are the direct link with consciousness. Of course, after you have manual drive with a holographic screen, so you, you enter your, I, can, I could enter my, my finger into the holographic uh, command and the electromagnetism of my body would interact with the hologram and uh, I could move. It was about that when I tried, it was about moving squares uh, in, a, in a panel to change the speed. So it was, um, it was quite fun. Feel a little tingling in your, in your finger. Um, then you have all oh, the... Um, etheric interface you can interface your consciousness without the the use of ai the without the use of technology directly interface your consciousness with the ship and then your body will be driving it so it's so beautiful to see that you have someone standing on a platform in the center of the the command room and the person is like in a trance and they are going to move their body to uh and the, as they move their bodies like a dance and the ship will move it's absolutely mesmerizing to see that it's, it's, it's not a common thing but some species do that um so you have also um interdensity uh technology that means they can jump density like the some races of the, the cedars to uh travel to obtain faster speeds uh, it's uh, quite interesting um the stealth technology the self technology um it's uh it's the same it's creating this this vortex around the ship if you shift it in a different frequency different rate of vibration of matter it disappears becomes invisible so that's what cloaking is about. Just change the frequency of the, the object and it will become invisible. Um, the ship skin, I, I'm going fast because that I think that's the last um, slide. Um, the, the skin of the ship that I had many times the occasion to touch, that's an illustration from my book, uh, We Will Never Let You Down, where I describe all this technology. So the ship skin, uh, it's a material that composes the external skin of most of the spacecraft. It's capable of modifying its molecular structure, magnetic charge and density regarding the environment and the conditions of travel, of course. If you come very close and try to touch the skin of a ship, it reacts slightly as if it was alive. It, it's like, ooh, bit shy. You know, <laughs> it's really, really weird. I know. And if you come very close and you try to touch it, it, it really reacts as, like if it was alive. So it can be a, a bit disturbing at first because you think, is that is that living skin? Is that alive? No, it's synthetic and it's animated by AI. 
so these materials, these super, super materials that we, you know, there's a lot of secrets programs on earth and Dan is a specialist to talk about that who are retroengineering all these materials and some of these materials uh they cannot crack the 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 system how does that work because they are made off world but some materials have been understood retroengineered and passed into the industry and many of us use such materials uh, nowadays, you know, like fiber optics and these things. Anyways, um, so um, why does the 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 the, the substance, the, the material of the ship just reacts like this? It's not because it's shy or it's scared. It's not that. It's because it's due to the natural electromagnetism of your body creating a pressure in the ether. That's all it is because this skin is so responsive to the ether and that slightly pushes back the material very slightly it's a synthetic living material that responds to the ship's mind ai so when the power core is activated the skin ionizes and awakens the ionization is created by the magnetic torsion field as we we, we saw and the radiation emitted is considerably harmful if you come too close it can melt your own atomic structure so when you see a spaceship if you get in contact um stop share if you get in contact with a spaceship it lands in in front of you wait that the lights are off <laughs> really because if you come too close it, it will dissolve your the torsion field it's so powerful that it will dissolve you know, your whole atomic structure but also it's so powerful that the air around is ionized and it's it's a plasma that is around the ship and the plasma, I mean, don't touch the plasma, <laughs> it's going to destroy you, you know? So when you see a spaceship, wait that the lights and engines are off. <laughs> <clears throat> that's it, uh, Danny and Dan. Um, <laughs> I, that's what I'm giving you today. <laughs> Try I to be quick. <laughs> You know, there's so much. Um, there's so much, and and just give us a couple more minutes of your time here on how many different spacecraft you've actually been on, and give us an idea okay. of the size of them, please. Okay, um, I've been in a great ship when I was nine. The size I don't remember because I, they they took me directly inside, uh, but it was uh, very cold, freezing cold, extremely cold. Uh, well. Mm. In, in a way, thanks, it was really cold because it was numbing me and I, my body was so focused on I'm cold that I it took over the fear, you know, and the pain. So uh, it's in a great ship, it's like it's form like you say, you see, you would say 3D printer. I mean, you know, everything is part of this one same material. And everything is round and melt into each other inside. Uh, there's no angle. It's very interesting. Or if you see angles, it's really rounded. It's all part of the same thing, same material. Uh, I've been in a scout ship many times. Um, scout ship of the Federation. Uh, they are Pleiadian models. Um, they are not made of one same material. They are construct inside. So uh, they are very big. Uh, I couldn't um maybe the small one can be 20 meters big ones 100 meter couldn't really evaluate it's difficult to evaluate you know um and in this so it's uh like you are in a, in a building inside uh you don't feel the ship moving either you you have a, a big screen it's not a window so you don't have a window, you have a screen. And that really uh, shows you what's in ahead of the ship, or you can change the settings and see other stuff. But uh, that's a screen. Um, working with torsion field, these ships, I've been in there. I've been in a cargo ship once, um, tubular cargo ship, transport ship. So they, I wanted to see one, and I had the occasion of uh, um, being in one not going out of and walking inside, but I was in a scout ship with Thorhan, 
And we went inside this cargo ship because this big tubular cargo ship are enormous, enormous. They are Pleiadian uh, manufactured. They are used in uh, the Galactic Federation of Worlds and also in black programs because these ships have been given to the dark space programs on Earth and the dark fleet offered by the Alcyon Pleiadians, the enemies of the uh, Taigeta Pleiadians who run the Federation, create the Federation of Worlds. Anyways, whole story. So I've been in one of them. So you come in, the windows are rectangular. You come in one side and you come out the other side. There's a circuit. And when you come in one side, there's a kind of a terrace where you land. And when you want to go out, you just cr lift, cross over and go to the other window and you you, uh, you go. But all is done with clearance and you have to wait, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, on the upper part is the habitat. The whole upper part, uh, I'd say one fourth of the the cylinder is the habitat, and in between, in in the middle, in in the big void, it's like technical things or ship can be repaired or it's technical apparel. But I didn't really see what was in there. This cargo because scout ships can cannot not go uh, very fast, very, very far. These cargo ships are very handy because they teleport. They're like self-stargates. They teleport. So uh, they, they're transporters like this. I've been on the Excelsior, uh, the one of the space stations of the Galactic Federation of Worlds. That's huge. Uh, it's a, as big as a big, big city. Uh, you have everything. You have... Um, um, parks, you have uh, shopping centers, <laughs> you have habitat, you have uh, restaurants, leisure, uh, military facilities. Uh, it, it's it's enormous, enormous, enormous. I've been on board an Anunnaki shuttle uh, and of course on board the Nibiru, but the, Anun the Anunnaki shuttle is totally different. It's much older technology. But they took another direction. The the habitat is not isolated. That means you don't feel the pressure because using torsion field you don't feel the the, the pressure. The mass is cancelled, so there's no pressure, no friction. But it's not insulated in the way of the 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 the, the balance. You, you feel the movement, you know. So uh, it's the only ship I had to put a safety belt on. I went, what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I knew as soon as they 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 lift off. Um you, you feel it's it's moving, so you can be sick very easily, uh, but you don't feel the pressure. Very, very weird, very disturbing um for the senses, and I was sick, of course. Now I'm used to it. That's fine. I'm just um I, they give they gave me something to drink the drink the first time, and it, it's all right now. The Nibiru. He has mothership, uh, which, which, which is parked near Jupiter. That's his um, working with, same as with the moon, it's working with a living consciousness, a living being inside that he has fractaled from source. It's there. It's a big ball of blue sizzling light. It's huge, absolutely huge. And this being is a living entity. It's a consciousness. And his body is the Nibiru ship, is incarnated in that ship and is interfacing only with Ia. Ia is his father because he created it, he's fractaled it from source. And he will respond only to Ia and uh, the, the, the navigators who have the frequency interface uh, that Ia allowed, uh, made the connection. And so the ship will move like a being. I decide to go there. I'm going to move myself into space without using the technology. It's very, very interesting. Um, I think that's... Oh, I've been on um, a Horai ship, these big spheres as well, twice. Um, works about the same. So, um, here we go. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much. What a cacophony of uh, experiences you've had there and, you know, helps us to illustrate in our minds some of the, the craft that you mentioned. I remember uh, our beautiful Andromedan informer, the great, the one and only Alex Collier, has gifted us also his um, his physical experiences of being on an Andromedan craft, which was between eight and hundred miles long, which is an unbelievable concept for a regular human to to imagine to 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 conceive of but this is the reality <clears throat> and the way that you described the you know the the powering up the changing the ionizing of the fields of mercury etc the the creation of the frill and the the way that the the crafts use um that energy it, it's just so wonderful to have that insight uh, so guys run out and build your own spacecraft create a new line of cars <laughs> you know that don't don't trash the atmosphere um you know it's it's our turn so that's so wonderful elena um dan do you have any questions for elena on anything that raised there in your mind um at this point oh just what an incredible gift that we have a window into this other world you know i know for some people this may sound like like science fiction but, um, you know, I, I can comment on two of the slides that uh, Elena brought up in the great presentation that uh, one gentleman, uh, Mark McCandish, who's a fellow witness, um, in 2001, <clears throat> I sat in the Hilton Bar with him and he showed the alien reproduction vehicle and he went through the technical uh details of how it functions with the mercury vapor tube in the middle with the tesla configuration around it with the capacitor plates and how the pilot <clears throat> used a little ball that moved the electrical charge for the different capacitors to, to change the direction of the craft um yes yes that one <laughs> uh, and you know this was built back in the 1950s this was made in usa and we had anti-gravity craft that could go faster than the speed of light back in the 1950s, I want everybody to know. And also, uh, my own testimony as a top secret witness that testified back in 2001 was that uh, I received uh, in naval communications a report from a ship off the coast of Alaska where a craft that was about 70 feet in diameter merged out of the ocean off Port Bow. And it was just like the illustration that Elena showed how the ionization was this reddish orange color uh, as it ionized, as it was in our Earth atmosphere, then shot going off in space. Um, <clears throat> you know, this is back in 1969. Um, and so, you know, I feel like I'm kind of a kind of a bridge, you know, to the old school into trying to catch up to what Elena's bringing out you know this is a this is kind of a, an extraordinary gift you know how many people uh are abducted as a gray uh abduction and then the implant is repurposed to be a quantum you know a physical quantum communication device this is not channeled material or anything of that nature Elena is receiving um, direct communications, and that's how she created her book, because she has this incredible artistic ability, probably from her being an archaeologist and having to recreate things. She can, uh, all these 150 different species, she had direct visual access into the Galactic uh, Federation's database. And this is like a historical book, <laughs> you know, uh, with all the details of all the different races. So, you know, it's um, it's something I highly recommend everyone to, to check out. Um, I mean, this is historical. It's incredible. Yeah, no, we're always so bowled over by you, Elena, and the information that you bring. And it's so great to take from our conference, our galactic conference, what you showed us there um, and just put it straight on the public forum um, so everyone can have access, can understand and can compare their own notes or their own trainings or their own thinkings because a lot of people will see what you did there and it will make such perfect sense that it will be like, again, other cellular awakenings, which is what we need. As we were saying before, we hit record that we are here 
uh, the three of us, a mission is to tell everything, share it everywhere, be everywhere, you know, just put everything out there. Uh, we are way beyond uh, time because we love humanity. We love our brothers and our sisters, and it's our duty to, to do what we're doing. Now, now that we know how to build our own spacecrafts and power them, Dan Willis, let's talk about the frill energy, the crystallized energy. What is it? How do we create it? And what do our brothers and sisters upstairs use it for, please? Well, I'm learning, <laughs> continually learning. Um, when my journey on this started back in 1977, trying to understand the interface of consciousness with crystals due to an interaction with the being that uh, Elena identified. I'll do a quick show here. Um, this uh, being, this emether being, projected the sphere in space, and he was uh, teaching me something about the structure of the matrix that we're in, and that uh, as he projected the sphere, one geometry formed within the other, like nested geometrical solids going into infinity and turned back into the sphere, and it was conveying that uh, through love, um, we evolve and move back to the source, which is is the totality of everything you know i'm kind of summarizing in a in a basic uh this is a illustration from elena's book uh her first book uh a gift from the stars back in um 2020 that uh you know detailed 110 different extraterrestrial species um and so that that uh that experience it was a kundalini opening experience and uh you know thousands of volts going from the hands and feet and i didn't know anything about uh you know platonic solids and geometry and and so i knew that uh, crystals seemed to have a hold a key to that and so i sought out um dr uh dr marcel vogel who uh was head scientist at IBM who had some unusual experiences, man-plant communication, and then went into crystals. And so I uh, joined him as a research associate. Uh, I drove to the mines in Arkansas. I got a huge batch of crystals and cutting them for two dozen medical doctors. Uh, that's another project. <laughs> and so... Um, Over the years, I've uh, wanted to understand more. You know, I tried to grab every book I could on the subject. Uh, in 20, 2022, uh, Elena invited me on a show, and we were discussing, um, you know, some of the work I was doing with Marcel with the crystals, and and she said that, um, let's see, get our, our images of our dear friends here. Yeah, here we go. I don't have a nice organized slideshow, but <laughs> it's um okay. Uh good looking man here, Thorhanna Redion, her contact. Um he uh said his younger brother, uh Jen Hannah Redion, is uh going to a university in the Pleiades and learning how to terraform planets or what they call being a star maker and that uh, he knows he knows something about crystals you can imagine you know thousands of years ahead of us and that uh, we could ask him some questions and so I was over the top you know excited that uh, we could uh, get some exchanges going so from the year um 2022 april to present day um on and off uh elena and i have been uh having exchanges with jen ham and and like a question answer uh where elena would relay it she would she could see the questions i ans i asked and then jen ham would respond and elena would type them out and in this process, we learned a lot. Uh, all the questions that I had about, you know, the structure, what 
what quartz is, what's love with uh, what is, um, you know, water, what is, uh, you know, the, the structure of the matrix. Um, and in these exchanges, um, we were able to get some technology. And in fact, one of the exchanges, um, I asked a question that was on the list of things not to discuss with us Terrans uh, on the prime directive that uh, Thorhan had to get uh, from the high command authorization in order to answer. Um, and so Jen Han answered the question. And one of the technology uh, gifts, you could say, that he gave was the eye of the crystal, the vortex that's formed. And Dr. Marcel Vogel, when he um, he started, uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Um, he had a, a dream, a vision that came to him to cut the crystal in a dipyramidal, like the tree of life. Uh, which is interesting, the symbology on that. Um, and so we first started cutting them with a uh, four-sided crystal. And then he thought, well, um, start putting more sides on the crystal because there's a vortex that spins through the crystal and that would increase the vortex spin with the more sides. And so he went, you know, six, eight, and so forth on up. But what he didn't realize and he would have loved to have known is that when you cut the crystal in alignment with the hexagonal core structure of the crystal it opens up this incredible attribute and if you cut one end of the crystal at a 51 well Jen Han's very accurate 51.843 a lot of people know this is 52 degrees and the other end at 60 degrees, it creates, uh, um, uh, and the 52 degree angle, by the way, is like a transponder in the matrix. It's the angle which the Great Pyramid in Egypt is made. And the 60 degree angle, the, the matrix that we're in is a like the flower of life, which is basically all 60 degree tetrahedrons so the, the tetrahedron matrix basically resonates with the 60. So it, it like interfaces with the, uh, the matrix that we're in. And so what happens is, is that these two geometries, one, um, let's see if I get a better illustration up here. <laughs> one second. Here we go. This one vortex is spinning one direction, you know, like Elena described on the uh, craft, how there are two spinning vortices going in opposite directions. These two spinning vortices, if you plot the uh, termination angles where they can where they meet, it's the approximate area of what is called the eye of the crystal. These two vortices that are going in a, opposite directions, as they converge, they open up a singularity into, into the vortex. And that when you piezoelectrically stimulate it, it allows through consciousness, if you're in gamma brain waves, you can actually alter the structure of reality. Um, Jen Han stated, um, he said it works by finding the phase conjunction node inside the crystal by projecting inwards the geometrical shapes of the two opposite points like a mirror. There is the vortex singularity of the crystal. Focus your thought and energy just there and you may project your consciousness to anywhere you wish in this universe and other universes, to other densities, other dimensions. Anything is accessible in space, dimension, and time. This is great power, Lena. It is very important information. I'm honored to be able to share this with you. So that was um, that was one of the two technology gifts. The other one is being able to elicit the frill that comes from the eye of the crystal. And this is how they 
power their entire planet, how they power the starships, as Lena described. Um, frill comes from source, and we're all fractals of source. And that, um, go away. another illustration here. Um, no. It's like in this, uh, there's like an infinite number of dimensions or universes. We're in one of them. They're like uh, these spherical bubbles, you could say. And that um, in each universe, there's different densities. In this particular universe, there's 12 densities, with the 13th is what you call source and is directly connected with what we term love and what uh, what frill comes from. And so when the structure of quartz is such that it resonates geometrically on all the densities at the same time, and so it acts as a dimensional bridge to source. And so when the eye of the crystal is opened, um, when the eye of the crystal is opened, what happens is frill comes from it. And forgive my, uh, <laughs> don't have my uh, slides here in an exact organized uh, manner here, but let's see, let me get a You're doing good great. one showing. Doing perfect. It's so wonderful to see this and have you explain it to us again and uh, have the extension of the spacecraft and the power up of that to the frill and how else it's used as this free energy that we are employing here across our planet. So working with my wonderful science team of uh, Chris Asson, the incredible French scientist, and um, Kent Noonan, the incredible uh, electronics engineer, uh, the three of us, uh, we um, actually Create it based on Jen Han's uh, specifications, how the crystal specifically cut that uh, was donated by the wonderful people at Crystal Light and Sound, and that we wound the copper wire perpendicular at 90 degrees clockwise and the silver wire counterclockwise, and then pulsed these two coils to create this dual uh, torsion field that what happens is um, when this dual torsion field uh, has a conjunction with the crystal lava structure, it opens up the frill and you can see on the oscilloscope, there are very, very uh, extreme pulses that are pulsing, alternating, you know, back and forth between the copper and silver um, Let's see, here's uh, at the Galactic Spiritual Informers Conference. Uh, I was honored, thanks to <laughs> Danny, uh, bringing forth our team, and we presented it to the world, the first operational frill generator crystal that uh, is still, we're still working on optimizing it. Um, let's see, got an image here. Got so many slides here. <laughs> I didn't have a specific, um... ah, here we go. Um, their sister, Jen Han and Thor Han's older sister actually is an attendant to uh, one of the crystal generators on the planet Era. And they use pyramids, like 52 degree angle. And the crystals are um, inside these pyramids with the, as uh, Elena in the illustration, with the copper and silver that elicit the frill, and this is how they um, this is how they they power their whole planet. It the frill goes up to the top of the pyramid, and then is like transponded. And the large cities that have a large pyramid, and the power web of the city is like wirelessly. They don't use wires, ugly wires like we have on planet Terra. <laughs> um, and then out in the country, they have um, where um, Jen Han comes from, where his sister works. They have a 
a, a smaller pyramid, but a good size, and it powers the community. And if you're way out in the remote area, like I am on this planet, um, they have like a small unit that will emanate the frill, which is very beneficial to the environment. Uh, frill, when it goes into the body, it uh, um, it's healing. Plants love it. They grow like crazy uh, because it's the life force of the universe. And it goes into the body and um, it removes um, disharmonics that are in uh, the oscillations of the molecules of our body and therefore acts like a healing agent. But because of the control structure, because our planet's been technologically hijacked, we're not allowed to develop electrical power generation like they do uh on their planet but this is incredible incredible technology that um i'm, I'm kind of excited about um as we continue to have exchanges with jen han we're working on optimizing the frill projection and we're going to give it to our planet open source freely uh, scientists around the world can reproduce it and use it for beneficial purposes. Um, it's um, healing and beneficial for people. And then, um, you know, you could take things like, um, you know, like this this uh, quartz coil and put it around the frill generator and run water through it. And the frill would impregnate itself into the water, which could be sent to irrigation lines to feed plants and agriculture um there's there's incredible incredible things that frill can uh do for our world as it as it's used on other worlds but uh you know we're doing baby steps at a time on this planet because uh our uh our poor planet has been um intervened by uh elements that have uh, you know denied these realities and um have kept us using primitive obsolete technologies like nuclear oil and coal and um but um i have a feeling there's this going to be um a public since we're all connected as jen has said we're in this planetary matrix and each one of us affects this planetary matrix and as consciousness expands and becomes aware of the you know we, we've been falsely indoctrinated for generations as more of us become aware of the false indoctrination that has happened uh i believe it will steer us to a point where uh we will know everything will become transparent and we'll no longer accept uh this reality and and uh become a peaceful civilization to be able to join the galactic federation worlds and then we can be allowed to um, have this technology on our planet. And the great thing is, is that we're not waiting for permission. We have it now, we take it, we use it, we populate. And so very soon, there won't be a single electricity bill to pay. You know, old people won't freeze to death in England or Iceland because they can't afford the money to put their, their heating on. That, that world that was created mm. for us by really bad people, who are being eliminated and removed, um, it will no longer exist. This is the time and this is what's happening. This is what time it is. It is the time of frill. It is about everyone having, as you said, open source to everything. And it's so exciting. And some people, they'll have a little bit of a hard time wrapping their head around it. And that's all right. That's all right. But it's a tsunami now of good and great. And our duty as beings to own this and to have this and you know the money making days of the billionaires taking technology and trying to patent because just recently as we know in France uh, some silly people tried to actually patent the frill generator arrête arrête stupide yeah, <laughs> seriously um, and again, that's another reason why we're talking out, speaking out, bringing you guys who are the source of this, the source of information, directly implemented and shared with you from off-planet brothers and sisters. Yes, but this is the most exciting time, is it not? 
I would like to uh, to add something to what you just said, Annie, because we are we have urged to make this knowledge public. The the Dan has created a website where all the information is updated and free. Because of this, it protects it. That means because it is in the public arena, nobody can patent it. And because you cannot patent it, you cannot stop it. You know, if an information is under a patent, uh, a government can block the patent. But you cannot patent this because we are putting this for free, available for everyone. Yes, um, um, it's up on uh, marcelvogel.org uh, in honor of uh, what... Um, in honor of the pioneering work that uh, Dr. Marcel Vogel originally started on this planet. Uh, he would have, I wish he was alive today. He would be so thrilled to uh, receive this uh, information. But on that, uh, it has the communication log um, of our exchanges that shows how we develop uh, understanding um, and uh, it's it's very enlightening. I suggest everyone to um, to explore it. Beautiful, wonderful. Um, some of the slides you had there, Dan, uh, depicted what we know to be the tree of life, the uh, geodesic, um, you know, um, geometric uh, patterns that make that that shape uh, and create that that velocity and intensity, a uh, frequency. And uh, there's a flip side. It seems to all information that's been put out in the world. And I'll, I'll never forget one time hearing for the very first time and laughing out loud. I honestly thought this was a joke, that somebody was having a laugh. When I was talking about the beautiful uh, tree of life, that geomatra that is, you know, said to be like literally the building blocks of matter. Matter solidifies using that particular geometric pattern. And somebody said, well, what about the, the, the daisy of death? I'm like, ha ha, thinking that has to be a joke. The daisy of death. Are you having a laugh, mate? And uh, of course, it's a complete and utter nonsense. Go ahead, Lena. Yeah, I would like to uh, to comment on this because Dan explained it very eloquently. Uh, the flower of life. This is this was shown as well to me, reminded to me by Ia Enki, which I meet physically. Um, it's in my book, The Cedars, so everyone can see, can read the details of this, this communication, this visit and this conversation, what it shows me, the, the real pattern of the universe, which I could access also recently into the, the library. Anyway, this flower of life pattern is represented on Earth in all the most ancient cultures all around the world, in temples, um, and Actually, in China, they represent it like, like spheres, which is the right pattern. Yes, this is it. Thank you. It's not flat. It is the, the, the circles are spheres. This is the structure of the, the multiverse. This structure is represents the, the, how the, the, the matrix of the, the, the multiverse is, is, uh, is working. And because of the angles, you that Dan showed the 60 degree angles of the connection between the, 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 the junction points of the spheres. This tells you where the power is, how to decrypt the power of real, the power of the universe and our power. When you know what this is about, it is the greatest secret of, of all the greatest knowledge. It's this is God, this is creator, this is the body, of creator of god that's what god is it's it's this D to prevent that humanity discovers these things that is all there is always counter narrative that are elaborated by uh, dark organizations and there is there was a um, there is a counter narrative to um blurry the the the, the knowledge and confuse the minds of people it's called uh, Shayana Dean. I, I need to name it. Uh, this is uh, an absolutely uh, uh, compound of uh, disparate uh, elements that is a total BS that doesn't make sense. And it's trying to, to, um, to demonstrate that this key pattern 
is in fact very evil or negative or it's gonna destroy everything and for people to turn away from from studying it and discovering that that's god that's the universe that's creator that's creation and creator at the same time and it can it can con- and encompasses all the the, 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 the secrets of the, the, the power of the free of the universe anyways and consciousness and everything so uh and the way this narrative is is counter narrative is done it's signed uh three letters agency because that's how they do they're going to come up with a narrative that is very complex and in this in the document that have been disclosed from this three letter agency and that are available online in one of these documents they say how to manipulate um, the people by creating a very complex story that's so complex that the person is going to feel ashamed not to understand it it's it's, you're not able to understand because it doesn't mean anything but so you're going to pretend you understand it and follow it like uh, a scripture like something you need to worship instead of understanding and that's how it works that's where this counter narrative works so i wanted to expose it and take this opportunity danny because this is um taking people away from the truth thank you Elena. oh that is that is so true because we've been generationally falsely indoctrinated onto the reality whenever you hit the core truth of things there's going to be a counter narrative that comes up you know that you know people come up with that the, the earth is flat and when it's under a dome you know and, and all this is like a darpa thing they're taking advantage of the people who haven't had the time to research fully on this and when you understand that we're each fractal of source and and source is creative and therefore we're creative and when we think we project thoughts and they're geometric in nature both jen han and dr marcel vogel knew this and that this interface of this matrix that we're in is a tetrahedral jen han said that tetrahedral fractal geometry is the secret of the universe and this is revealed in the flower of life that elena's uh pointing out yeah beautiful yeah so important to you know again bring the information back the information and guys you are invited to share elements obviously of this broadcast with dan willis and elena denan of course you are we want you to but do the right thing and and honor the source of the information because a lot of people are putting stuff out owning it and you look like an ass when you do that and it's not dishonest we need to be done with that let's share but name and respect the sources because these guys put their lives on the line for you they brought so much here at such a high cost on many 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 levels for years and years and years um but we are all um doing the very best we can um if i was going to start another business right now i think i'd open me a big beautiful crystal store and again you know there's been an attack on crystals don't buy crystals they're evil the christian uh thinking um i don't always bash the christians just sometimes uh when they're just a bit too silly uh and can't accept that our planet mother earth gave us crystals to work to blend with we are crystalline we have a beautiful pineal gland our own powerful crystal which emits piezo or piezo electricity this is our own crystal generator so how could possibly could be believed that crystals are bad or not good for you but when you know the secrets of the universe which we are revealing here right now there's no going back you can't unhear it you can't unthunk it it's out there it's out there um elena Danan, is there anything else that you feel at this point we should be sharing or anything you'd like to say in order to to bring this particular broadcast to a close well i i would say that wanting to attune to the secret of the universe you need to go within first and attune to yourself the the creation which is the creator it's it's difficult to understand but creator is the creation and the creator is the creator why because creation creates itself by manifesting by evolution um source we are all a fractal of it 
because source is not a point in space and time. It's not singularity somewhere, but it's everywhere. It's omnipresent and in everything, in every particle, it's the access to source. And when you activate particles, especially with quartz, quartz are transponding densities and the Altians uh, are, are using crystals to create environments where people from different densities can live together. When you activate the, 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 the particles that compose a crystal, that compose a body, that compose the, the, the matrix of reality, you do it by consciousness, by giving an impulse, a thought, consciousness. And Marcel Vogel had discovered uh, that with the breath, you can imprint mm. consciousness crystal by breath, you know, project it inside. That's a, a, a compression wave, a gravity wave. Consciousness produces gravity waves. That's how you access the, 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 the matrix. You can transform. You become creator. When you activate yourself as a creator, because we are all creators, because we are all fractals of source. And the flower of life, this beautiful pattern, explains it all. It's the library of all knowledge, um, multiversal knowledge. There is so much I would like to say about it, but I think um, that that would be it for, for this time. Activate your own consciousness, your own will, your own manifestation and project and create the world you want to live in. Live in it now. Beautiful. Mr. Dan Willis, sir. Yes, and you, you can use a crystal uh, to, to do that. And um, you can um, help contribute to this world because each one of us is a bridge to creating that world that we all, you know, want to see in our hearts that, you know, what we're <laughs> so done with, <laughs> you know, the, uh, all the dysfunction that has happened on this planet. And, uh, you know, this is an incredible, beautiful world. And we've got so many wonderful witnesses uh, that have come forward that have given us a peek of that, that world that's been hidden behind the curtain that needs to be ripped <laughs> out and brought forward you know to uh to our planet and it's been long enough and it's uh it's time and i i i just uh am greatly honored um to know both of you and um to be a participant in this uh this evolution of our planet terra yeah we're so proud of you dan too uh so much so uh, the two of you, I mean, single-handedly are dropping the biggest bombs of disclosure we've ever to this point in time had. So guys out there, please share the information, whether you share this broadcast, whether you talk about it, whether you create groups and share, whether you do your own broadcast using some of the information from Elena and Dan here and just get it out there. People like Joe Rogan, people with big channels, they are so scared of these people. They are so afraid to put themselves in front of these great people. So we're going to have to do the job. How else do we do that? How do we connect with people like Dan Willis, Elena Danan, Dr. Michael Sala, JP, um, Dr. Dr. Christiane Northrup, and people like that, Dr. Lee Merritt. They're all going to be in one place this September. It's called the Galactic and Spiritual Informers Connection. It is our conference that we created for you out there. You want the disclosure that you want to know the secrets of your planet. Who are the people running your planet? Who are the people that shouldn't be running your planet? What are the systems that need to be taken down? What proof do we have? We can't say everything online because there are boob tube police policing everybody's thoughts and their voices. So we're having a conference. It's gonna be outside of Denver in Colorado, September 27, 28, 29. Come be with us. Come meet us. Dan Willis will be there again this year, and he will be again showing the frill generator. You will get to see it, photograph it, witness it, feel the energy 
that it gives off. And it's such a small, little, beautiful thing that, that does so much. This is where we're at, guys. This is our turn, our time of disclosure on this planet. So the galacticspiritualinformers.com is all you need, galacticspiritualinformers.com. You'll go to the website, you'll see who's speaking this year. You can get your tickets there. And we can't wait to see you uh, as you're joining us all, all of us, humanity, shoulder to shoulder on this great, great expose of us and our, our gifts, the gifts that we're already on this planet that we're taking back. Thank you, Dan Willis. Thank you, Elena Danan. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, my name is Danny Henderson. I do send you my love from my heart to yours, truly. And we will all, we'll see you soon.